Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Step Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industries. Right now, you are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen to a real life podcaster as we dig into the why, who, and what of their show so that you can identify a powerful how, one action that he's going to be able to take to see results in the next 30 days. I am so excited to welcome Randy Silver, host of the weekly podcast and daily YouTube series, Leap of Fate. Hey, Randy, welcome. Thank you for having me on. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Well, Leap of Fate has released 49 episodes, uh, podcast mm -hmm. episodes since May 25th of 2020. Uh, Randy says that its purpose is to instill the self-belief in yourself to strive for greatness via Mamba mentality. The yep. goal of his channel is to galvanize and enable you to achieve your goals. So Randy, that is so awesome. And I have to ask now, I, we talked about this a little bit before. We're going to talk about nuts and bolts of your show, what's mm -hmm. working, what you can do next. But I have to ask, um, what is Mamba mentality? Do you know Kobe Bryant? I, I, yeah, I mean, I know yeah. who he is. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> RIP Kobe, living legend. I yes. guess he's not living anymore. Um, his, his motto was Mamba mentality. It means persevere, overcome. When anything is ever hard, you can have mind over matter and make whatever you're doing a reality. So his whole clothing line, his whole shoe line, everything was mama mentality. And unfortunately, obviously him and his daughter passed away and his, uh, now his, his wife, I guess his former wife, I'm not really sure his widow, excuse his me, widow, yeah. his widow, uh, they just started a new clothing line called mama Sita mentality mm -hmm. over his daughter. So now they're doing children's clothes. So it's just, it means fight for what you believe in, put the hard work in and you will achieve what you want is pretty much what that means. So how do you envision your podcast being the conduit to that? Everybody I bring on, that's a great question. Everyone I bring on has mom mentality in their life. They've overcome some type of adversity in terms of professional, in terms of personal, in terms of whatever they're doing to achieve the success that they're at or at that stage of climbing to the success that they want. And my goal bring them on is to share with my audience, the Loft family, that they're able to achieve their goals, whatever that may be. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, but when you stay, you persevere and you work hard, you can make your dreams reality. And that's what my guests are talking about. So I'm able to bring on people, maybe you've never heard of before, or like this past one, I brought on a very famous DJ group autograph. You know, they're they have millions of fans worldwide. And we didn't talk about what's like to be on stage. What's it like to be in front of 50,000 people. We talked about the pre-work that when nobody was around what they do to get to the point that got them to becoming famous. And that's what I'm really interested in telling people about is that behind the scenes work to get you where you want to go. I love that. I think that that's fantastic. And we sure can use a lot of that in the world right now. So I oh, appreciate 100%. you doing that. <laughs> so, so can I give you the reason why I started the podcast? Yes. I think I'd give a good that's overview. my next question. So that's sure. ideal. So I'm going to put you on the, on the spot again. Do you know, Charles Barkley? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Charles Barkley, another NBA player during the pandemic, he was on TNT and he was talking about how everybody's lives suck. 1% of the world lives are awesome. 99% of the lives suck without sports being on. Obviously everything got shut down. You realize that you don't have that conduit for two, three, four hours a weekend a day to get away from your life sucking. And he was talking about that on TNT in front of everybody. And I was just like, you know what? That is such a pessimistic mindset because I'm definitely not a one percenter. I'm not in that category whatsoever. And my life does not suck. I love my life. I'm having <laughs> such a great life. I have so many people in my network who I know are in the same vein. So it gave me the aha moment is I want to start a podcast on YouTube to share that message, that story, and show that you don't need to be uber rich or in that one percent but not have a shitty life. So right. that's kind of, I always had an idea of one to start a podcast. I never knew what I wanted to be. And that's kind of where it started. And I gave myself a weekend, just locked myself in my room, read a bunch of blogs, YouTube University, all this stuff, and got myself um, after like 12, 15 hours ready to start the podcast. Yeah, that's awesome. That I, you know, and isn't he, he's an entrepreneur too. I'm just in yeah. shock that he would yeah, say that yeah. out loud. Yeah, real talk, <laughs> real talk. He he's doing? <laughs> exactly. And I get what he was doing. Like he, yeah. he was He's being transparently honest. I get it. Yeah. But I just am such a positive person. I don't like that negativity being spewed out in the world. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, and there's something to be said for feeling what's happening to you at the moment. One thing I really like, do you know Barbara Corcoran? No. Okay, I'm so she's I'm one sorry. of my favorite entrepreneurs. <laughs> I'm I'm like a total Shark Tank fan. Oh, Shark Tank. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I do know. Yeah. My apologies. So I love Barbara Corcoran uh, and I love real estate. So, and she's a strong woman who's also womanly. So I just have always been, uh, I always had this list of, of women for my daughter that is like, these are the kind of people that you can mentor mm -hmm. after, you know, and she was always on that list. Um, but one thing that she says, uh, she really values when people, how quickly people turn around. So like if she's looking at someone who went through diversity, she wants to look at how quickly can they turn it around and turn it into something good. Mm. So she, uh, I can't exactly remember exactly what she said. The way that we reinterpreted it is you get a 30 second pity party and then get over, like move on, <laughs> like feel it and then, you know, get onto it. And then usually it's some kind of like, how is this the best news ever? And then turning it into yeah. it. So, so I appreciate his shock factor, you yeah. know, there is like, let's just say there is a problem. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem, but, um, you know, maybe letting that be the end of it and the feeling that you're left with. I'm not such a, like, I'm so disappointed Yeah, so, <laughs> so glad that it turned into something yeah, amazing. I agree. You. So I agree with you because my personal motto is never let the day before dictate how you live the day after. Mm. So oh, I love that. yes, maybe yesterday sucked, but you wake up, it's a new day, new moon, new sun go make something new happen. And so that's how I've always persevered over tough situations is I truly never let a bad situation fester the more 30 seconds that one day when I wake up the next day, it's my chance to be great. And I try to be great every day. Love it. So tell me when you started the podcast or even now, what's the outcome that you want from it besides, I mean, I, I'm, I rarely, if ever talk to podcasters who don't have some vision, mostly because I don't want to talk to the ones who don't. <laughs> but I, I'm always like super magnetized by somebody who has great vision like you do. But uh, that, you know, more, more podcasters quit than keep going. Um, well, or almost what was I think the latest stat was like five out of every seven quit or I don't know, it's some kind of really wow, high number. I've really kept up on it. Yeah, but it's over half. And with that in is that true? I don't know. I need to look that up again. I had that like, Fact it, check, please. It, I know it's like, maybe it was a third. I don't know. Whatever it was, it was insane. And I, and I thought, even if it's a third, I just still feel like that's so high. Um, and, and that is on my to-do list for after this episode, but, um, I, you know, I, when you have a vision like that, you don't want it to die. And mm -hmm. one thing I've found is that the more someone's got an outcome that they want to see, you know, want to achieve, they're more sustainable because the feeling good and the altruistic kind of thing is super, but you still have to like pay the bills. You still, you know, I mean, there's still like yeah. things that happen and it gets tiring and, you know, and then squirrel, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So what do you have some kind of outcome that you want from your show of some sort? Yeah. So I have three stages. I should preface that I do this podcast on the side. My real job is I'm a chief revenue officer of an e-commerce company. So that is more what I do mainly. And I'm 27. So I do the podcast on the side. My weekly goal to podcast is if I can get at least one person to listen and one person to make a positive impact in their life from the message that whoever came on my podcast changed, I'm successful. So mm -hmm. I probably put in, you know, I do the recording. I use Final Cut Pro for all the editing, the video, the audio. I do all the social media. Probably takes me 10 to 12 hours in the course of seven days to get a podcast ready to go with everything that goes with it. If I can change one life, fantastic. That makes mm -hmm. me so happy. The middle term goal is I'm at 98 subscribers on YouTube. I probably have about 200 between everything, Spotify, Apple, whatever. Let me get 200 subscribers on YouTube. Let me get that to 200. Let me get that to 500. Let me get to 1,000. Because in addition to the podcast, as you said at the beginning, I also do vlog videos. I do how-to videos. I do um, uh, workout videos. So I really just try to have this whole cornucopia of just creating an asset that every day someone can go to the YouTube channel and there's something new that goes with it. Someone can go to my Instagram and there's something new. So that way, almost like a Nelk Boys, which is a YouTube channel or like Barstool Sports, there's always mm -hmm. new content coming out. So they're staying in the realm of the leap of faith, which so takes, oh, go ahead. This is, which would takes me to the third level, which would be once I get big enough, I would love to create my own 
like network where Leap of Fate is this umbrella per se. And then I have other different podcasters below me who talk about mindfulness, meditation, a sales. And so now the Leap of Fate is this ominous company. Uh, it's already created as an LLC and everything. And eventually that will be like the overarching and everything else below it will be people under our uh, company. So that's like okay. short, middle, long-term. Okay. So right now you're really building your top of mind awareness, building yep. that credibility, things like that. That's in that, that's the space that you're in right now. Exactly. Yeah. And then, definitely that's that short space. I'm not anywhere near middle or long-term yet, but like, again, well, you never I have know. to take my own words. Yeah. I have to take my own <laughs> words. Like I tell people it takes a lot of work. And so I don't get discouraged. Maybe I'm not there yet. Cause I know there's got to get to hundred subscribers. Then you got to get to 200. Then you got to get to a thousand. So I haven't monetized anything yet. It's really me just having fun doing it myself. And I that's why I feel like, as you said, a lot of people probably in podcasting probably burn out because they're doing something they don't love, but they're doing something where it's just there to try to get to a goal that isn't attainable in the moment. So then after say six months, you're not anywhere near that attainable goal. You're going to get defeated and you're going to quit. So as long as I do what I love and having fun, then even if I never make money 30 years down the line, which hopefully, you know, I will fair enough. <laughs> yes. Um, I will still be doing it because I know it's my passion and what I love. Yeah, that's awesome. So I have to ask too, when it, I'm, I'm all about measurement too, because, you know, you do have a clear goal of, you know, changing one person or impacting one person each episode. And what ha have you been able to capture that? Like, has, are people telling you, are you mm. doing it just out of faith that it's happening? My parents tell me weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Aren't they all well? Your parents yeah. listen to your show. That's really awesome. Yeah. You're like a whole big fat step ahead of me. But but I but I <laughs> podcast about podcasting, so yeah. they're not yeah. really my ideal market so, <laughs> audience. So I think like we're very similar in this sense. Like you probably bring on a new podcast every week, and someone can learn something new from that podcast. Their new tip, a new trick, new mindset. I try to make my show the same way, where it's not a chronological week over week show. Someone can go back to a show nine months ago, and it still is relevant today because it's not a weekly topic on what's happening in the news. It's someone sharing their story. And then the cool part is how I can also build that audience from that is I bring recurring guests back on. So my biggest mm -hmm. recurring guest is Sean Levinson from Aware. He's one of my best friends, but he's starting his own clothing company and he does all this other stuff. So I bring him on like every four to six months and we get an AWARE update and he, we do other stuff with it. So now the crowd's invested in not just me, but they're invested in my guests are coming on because now that we're building that rapport. So that's how I've been able to really build the brand and help people out that way, which I think some people probably don't do sometimes. So if you're out there and you're a podcaster, try getting some guests sometimes who you can bring back periodically because then the audience will feel like they're invested in the story and what you're building, not just the week to week. Right. So I feel like I kind of went off your question. I apologize. No, it's okay. That's okay. No. Um, so, I mean, right now it's just really a matter of building the numbers. That's probably yeah. your best indicator right now is you're making an assumption. Well, if the numbers are growing, then someone in that group is going to be impacted. Yeah. So one of the things I always look at is um, like an average established podcast. I read one stat and I did look this one up. Um, <laughs> is that, uh, uh, the average, uh, 141 downloads in the first 30 days is considered average, which Got is it. pretty high. For, I mean, I bet that that drops since, you know, we went from like, it seems like overnight 550,000 podcasts to 2 million podcasts. So Easily. maybe that number is changing. However, the last I checked, that's what it was. Do you measure like monthly downloads? What's your benchmark? So for me, it's a bit harder because I start out as audio only for the first eight months. I don't want to bite too much. I didn't want to figure out how do I do video and all that. So I just did audio only. And that the start of 2021, that's where I started doing video and more of the YouTube videos that come with it. So I've actually decreased my monthly downloads and let's say Apple, Spotify, because I'm really trying to actually push more people to my YouTube channel. So it's more interactive. They're watching the videos. When I create the videos, I'm able to put um, Ken Burns style pictures or videos over it. So I put stuff that we're talking about into the video. So that way people are engaged with it. And then also they see the other videos on YouTube. So for me, I'm actually tracking more of the seven days. How many people are listening in the first seven days over uh, all channels? I'm probably averaging between 75 to 100. So I would say if I was actually checking that first 30 days, 
if, with some attrition going on, I'd probably get to 100, 150 in the first 30 days. But for me, it's really more about when am I making that impact in the first seven days? Because I really want to see, am I dropping people off as I try to transition them to YouTube? Am I getting more people to strive on? So that's what I really, really look for. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I, and, and honestly, it's very difficult to measure podcast uh, engagement because yeah. it's really coming from anywhere. If we're talking about um, top of mind and building credibility, we're, we're doing it on Facebook through quotes and, you know, like graphics that we're grabbing from it or, you know, like you, like you do, you do the daily videos or things like that. So I think that that's really good. Or even having, like, I would prefer a lower number in the first seven days of people who are going to YouTube, because that's like a whole nother step, you know, that they're taking. Yeah. So that's like a more weighted vote, <laughs> you know, per se of I'm into you. This is, this is how into you I am. So I think that that's really good. And uh, we talked about this beforehand a little bit and just having the higher, more engaged people following is uh, so much more valuable than just, I want a hundred thousand listeners. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't I have a hundred thousand listeners yet? It's like, well, I don't know how to talk to you because yeah, I, you know, I, I would, like, don't you want influence? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know? I would say I probably have a core 30 to 40 who I know lists on a weekly basis. At some point, maybe they messaged me like, Randy, this episode was so good. Um, I can see when the stats come out, like, hey, these, it's probably I get the first 12 hours, 20 people always listen. So I know their core. I yeah. wish I could have user data of who that was. So I could say like, thank you so much. I kind of have an idea by base who reaches out, but like I mean, you told me off podcast, that you went back and you listened to a couple episodes here and there just to get a, uh, a feel for me. So that way this was an engaging podcast, which I appreciate. So I, I use Buzzsprout to host my podcast audio and I can see who listens to podcasts. I can't see the actual name, but it says like episode 12 was listened to today, episode 11. So it's interesting to see when and what episodes are still listened to six, nine, 12 months down the line. And I, it will only helps me understand as I try to develop it more. Hey, people are going back and listen to that stock episode a lot. People are going back and listen to that personal finance episode a lot. So it shows me those are the topics I probably should recycle more often because those are getting the better engagement. Right. Oh, I love it. I love that you're doing that. In fact, that's one of the things when, when you listen, especially to the hot seats, that's, that hits it right on the head when I'm talking about is as soon as you start getting episodes out there, you learn so much and mm -hmm. you're able to grow faster. So in the beginning, uh, I had Neil Patel on one of my initial, Ooh, I know that name. <laughs> yeah. One of my initial, like I had 12 episodes of a podcast called chat and grow marketing masterminds and Neil Patel was one of them. And he, and, uh, we actually wrote, oh, we've been, we always write blog posts about every episode, but with him, I think we wrote like two or three, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but he talked a lot about marketing being like spaghetti, which I believe it's always testing, but it's that whole throwing the spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. And I think he said it not literally, you know, we have to be strategic and we have to understand what we're doing. However, it's true that once you've established your target audience, you don't exactly know how they're going to respond until they start responding. So I love yep. that you're doing that where you're looking at what episodes are getting listened to. How can we maybe take a different angle or have that person on again? So I love it. Um, one of the things that you said ahead of time, I asked you some questions before uh, I invited you on. Like you said, I was really like weird and selective about this whole thing. You're but... professional. That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, and I like to promise people too, like one thing you can, that you can expect from me is to be prepared because I know that podcasters are busy, busy people make the best podcasters. So I need to be uh, respectful of that. But one of the things that you said is that you wanted to build an empire. You started to allude to that earlier. You said, mm -hmm. I want to branch and create a network of podcasts all under the umbrella, which you um, talked about having people who had different specialties and things like that just a few minutes ago. And you compared it to cricket media, kind of like yep. cricket media, which I loved and have apparel and more, but most importantly, help people improve their lives and become better people. Why is that important to you? Growing up, my mom was a special ed teacher and she still is, is, excuse me. So I've always been around people who probably started their life already at a disadvantage, pure genetics, nothing that they could control. So whenever I didn't have classes or anything with my school, she would take me to her class and I would get to help out the kids. I've helped out with special Olympics and 
it just always gave me this drive to want to help people improve their lives. That took me to, I worked at an animal shelter for four years and helped dogs get retrained. So I took it from this humans to animals. And I feel like with this podcast, my calling is being able to really try to help drive people to their goal, drive people to become better people. You know, people in my family, unfortunately, have dealt with drug abuse and things like that. So trying to help them. So it's my way of continuing to just in a side hobby again, because it's my real job, um, be able to help people. And, you know, pandemic's been hard. We've all dealt with a lot. You know, we're coming out of it. We're still not there quite yet. And a lot of people probably did a lot of introspective, like I did. How do I fix myself? How to become a better person? And that's where weekly, as we move in, I don't want people to feel hurt or feel like they're going to go back into old ways. So being able to continue to help people week over week to understand that they are beautiful. They're great people. Your dreams can become reality. It's not going to be easy, but when you put your mind to it, you have that mamba mentality, you mm -hmm. can make it happen. Yeah, that's great. Well, and there's so much more to it than just making a great uh, world. It's like you get to surround yourself with that world. So I think that that's really beautiful. Yeah. So people always tell, sorry, that this, oh, no, so people, ahead, always, no. people always tell me like, you can't be this positive. Like it has to be fake. I'm like, <laughs> no, like, I choose not to look at the world in the negative light. Yes, fair enough. Again, like you see it, like I hate to bring this up. You see someone shoot up a uh, school, like there's no way that can be positive. It's a terrible situation, mm -hmm. but we can move forward, hopefully with the idea of how do we make sure this doesn't happen again? That's what I'm just trying to do with people is like, yes, the negative will happen, but we can come together as a society or as a group or as an individual and per persevere to a better place that will never happen again. Yeah, that's so true. So what's standing between you and that empire right now? Please subscribe to my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Please, yeah, I just, I'm at, as I said, 98 people um, on the YouTube subscribe. You know, I have probably, again, around 100, 200 on the audio. So I'm not there yet. I need to build a bigger clientele. I Like I said, I'm not monetizing it. So I'm not making any money. So say I wanted to bring someone in to start the podcast. They may be asking for money, things like that. You know, I'm that, this isn't my full-time job. So if I wanted to start a second podcast to get more going, you know, it's already taking me doing my day job for eight hours. And then I spend eight hours doing the podcast daily type of thing. So a time commitment, I would need to take that leap of faith on myself to, to make that happen until I feel like there's more momentum. I have a bigger base and I'm financially secure where I can spend that time then right now, um, I just need to grow it at the pace it's going and not try to uh, skip any steps in my mind. Okay. Awesome. That was a good question. Hopefully it was a transparent <laughs> answer. No, it's awesome. Um, so what I'm hearing, you need subscribers so that you have the resources to buy time, either make it your full-time job or delegate so that other people are running it so that you can use your highest and best use on the podcast, but still yeah. be able to expand. So subscribe. I tried to hire an intern actually to help oh, me yeah? with it. And I hit up every, I live in San Diego and I hit up every San Diego school, San Diego state, UC San Diego, USD. And none of them hit me back up. I was so disappointed. I hit up their intern department. I hit the, the communications department, their videography department, emails, calls. I think maybe because of the pandemic, but I wasn't able to get anybody to respond back to me to be a, get on that intern list for the summer and hire an intern. I tried LinkedIn. No, but I didn't get any bites off of LinkedIn. I tried Craigslist ads. So I must have been doing poor messaging on my internship for sure. <laughs> yeah. Was it free or paid? I started out as free and then I changed it to paid where, so I guess if you're listening, you want to be a paid intern uh, starting you whenever you want, $500 a month. I mean, I'll teach you everything around podcasting. What I truly need help with is social media outreach that really helped me not just, you know, do hashtags to continue to have people find me. I really need help with people uh, doing outreach, kind of like a sales. I just have a limit of how much I can do myself. So I really need someone to help me with that when I'm doing all this other stuff that goes with the podcast. Okay, perfect. So that gave me a good sense of your why, uh, why you're doing things and, uh, and some foundational things about your show. Let's talk a little bit about who have you identified you're in the market, you know, you're in e-commerce. So I trust that this isn't going to be foreign to you whatsoever, <laughs> but have you, uh, have you identified your target audience or your ideal listeners and viewers who that person it's, is? It's mainly millennials, 18 to 35 year olds. 
But you know what I'm actually finding is, which is really interesting. My friend's parents love my podcast. So <laughs> like, like 55 to 65 year old is frequently are reaching out to me saying like, I love the message. I wish this was around when I was a kid or I was growing up and heard this stuff. My, my guests are definitely tailored into the millennial stage, but it's very gratifying to hear that is resonating with a diversity of 40 plus years, give or take 20 to 60. But I definitely am trying to target that millennialism area. <laughs> awesome. Well, if you're anything like me and my kids, because uh, my kids are all mid to upper 20s and you know, these are things that we try to instill in them. So we yeah. probably, they probably listen it to, like I would listen to like, oh, this is exactly, <laughs> I'm so happy my kids are listening to this. Oh, and, and oh, wow, it's actually enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> so I could totally envision that whole whole scene playing out. So, um, so if you, you know, you've talked about this in other words, but, you know, from a marketing standpoint, we're always looking at what problem are you trying to solve for people? What is their transformation? So they come to your show and this is what they're experiencing now. And then they are listening, you know, after they've listened to a couple episodes, this is what they could see a change in their life. Have you identified that transformation? And if so, can you share that? Yeah. So for most people, it would be they're either stuck in the rut in their personal life or they're don't they're lacking ambition in their professional life or they don't know how to get to from point A to point B to achieve their goal. So what my people are coming on is they're talking about how they made that change for themselves. That could be one, they quit their job and took that leap of faith on themselves to become an entrepreneur and put the work in to make it happen. It could be B was they got the people around them, the supporting cast, family, friends, their network to help them overcome drug abuse, help them overcome suicidal thoughts, personal issues. So they're able to understand that you can build a network around you. It's not all on yourself to try to make whatever is happening. Or three, it's helping people understand how, especially as we talk about millennials, how they're becoming their own and becoming adults. So we've had people come on, talk about getting their first loan, buying their first house, uh, getting a rental property, uh, moving to a foreign country by themselves. So now they're understanding these life adult S type of skills that fair enough, you don't really get taught in school. Like, like I said, last week, my uh, episode was personal finance. We just talked about like, how do you save money? How do you not get in credit card debt? How do you pay off debt at like a certain percentage to make sure you're able to potentially still go out on a Friday and not feel like you're going to lose money. So like things like that, Whereas life lessons that people feel like they probably should know they don't, I think resonate the most because then it's very relatable in their own lives. Yeah. I'm just kind of scrolling through the topics and it looks like you're talking about, you know, everything from first time home buyers and van yeah. life. And yeah, that was a good episode. <laughs> I love it. Traveling the world for a living. So it's really the things that people love to hear and talk about. Um, so I think, I think that's really good. It sounds and, like. And, you know, and that's why I said it, it goes back to that. You could listen to van life two years from now, or you could listen to it the week it came out. And it doesn't matter when you listen to it. And that's why I think I'm onto something in the sense of how I frame this podcast, because it doesn't matter when you listen to it. And it helps me people be like, oh, I heard his new episode. I love it. Let me go back and look. Oh, van life. Oh, I bought a house. Oh, YouTube channel. And now I get them hooked because they're going back and listening to previous episodes that you maybe wouldn't be able to if it was a commentary on social daily events. Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, and I'm, you'll, you'll find that if you hear clicking, I am actually taking notes because the whole <laughs> idea is at the end of this, I just want to kind of gather this information and then just talk with you about some things, some low hanging fruit, because you're just doing so many things right. And as you know, from your business, when you can number one, leverage that and just make a couple tweaks even and see immediate results, it's just mm -hmm. so powerful. Um, or some things maybe that can be introduced that um, that would help. So, um, and a lot of this we did talk about when it comes to who um, we talked about evaluating your content um, and you have episodes that resonate because you can see there's more uh, engagement. Um, and we talked about measuring your audience. Have you joined online groups or forums or anything like that to answer questions of people who fit your ideal listenership? So I'm in a couple. One, there's a Facebook group called Pod It, and you can post your podcast there for people to find you, or you can say, hey, I want to be a guest. Here's my credentials. So I've been able to be a guest on shows that way and also find some good guests when I post it. 
corresponding to that Facebook group, they created a website called Pot It. You guessed it, so easy. <laughs> I'm a part of that. And that one's a little bit more tangible where you can get more into your show. People can give you reviews. So I usually get probably five to 10 people a week reaching out to me to come on my podcast because I've been highly ranked on that website. People give me good reviews. So I'm able to get people that way. And luckily I can say, I have a good network. So I've been able to get a lot of guests coming in who found me through YouTube, find me through Instagram, uh, friends of friends. And I'm not afraid to reach out to someone and be like, hey, I have a podcast. Here's my link. This is what I think you'd be interested in talking about. So I think a cornucopia of all of them together have really helped me. Yeah. So one thing that I know has helped me a lot is when I am really clear about who my audience is, like I know you mentioned yours is millennials, but if you really have a good firm grip on exactly who that person is. Let's say you like millennial, you know, you, the people who really love your show are millennials who like to travel or millennials who are just starting to go out and buy a house. If you know, you have episodes that come on regularly with that topic in mind, joining a group of millennials <laughs> would yeah. be, you know, something like that, where you're answering those questions, because what happens, you have all these these episodes that directly speak to the things that they're talking about. Um, because I found a lot of podcasters join podcast groups, which is great, especially like what you're talking about. Everyone wants to be on shows and things like that. But it, it's really powerful when you can go on to groups that are maybe not necessarily in podcasting, unless you're, unless your ideal audience, you're saying, yes, is, they're is podcasters, podcasters who are millennials. But if they're, if you're like, well, no, they're actually millennials who sometimes they listen to podcasts, but they're probably not, you know, maybe they're making a podcast, but more of the lifestyle interests that you're speaking to. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And so I kind of do that in the vein is I do that with Reddit. I can't, okay. I want to say I'm a part of those groups, but with Reddit every week when my episode comes out on Monday, say it's around real estate, I'll make sure to post it in those real estate groups and I'll dialogue for the seven days when it's running or say it's van life. I do it. Um, there's obviously podcast groups on Reddit, but you're right. I could probably do better at being in those groups consistently, but I try to make sure when that episode is relevant to that type of group, I post in those Reddits or Facebook groups. So that way I'm able to draw that audience in for that selective episode. That's awesome. I love that. But again, then it comes down to this is my daily job where yeah. that <laughs> takes a lot of time, the posting, the reposting, the commenting, plus the editing. So like, where do, how much time do I have to invest in that? where I want to get to, where I want to go while I'm still trying to, you know, like, so yeah. do, do my CRO job type of thing. So it's, it's hard. The, the funny thing is, is podcasting. That's one thing that most podcasters have in common where it's not their main thing, mm -hmm. even if it's their main thing. Like I help people with podcasts and I have a podcast about podcasts. So, I mean, it fits. However, I also have to do, like, I struggle with what you're talking about too. One of the things that I do um, to help with that is I have what I call my pajama work, which is where I'm just like <laughs> laying on the couch watching, you know, Shark Tank, <laughs> quite literally. And I'll just sit and like respond to stuff. And honestly, that creates so, it creates more work, honestly, than I even have time for mm -hmm. the next week. So I would say that, especially if you're active in Reddit and you've already seen results from it, if you just set some, you know, you can call it whatever you don't have to have it, your pajamas on, but <laughs> I'll call so it PJ time. <laughs> <laughs> there, you go. there you go. But it's worked so well for me because it honestly feels like I'm wasting time. Is that kind of, do you struggle with that ever where you're just like, I'm just talking on a thread. It doesn't feel like I'm actually working or do you feel like this is work and I don't want to do it. it. It feels like that a bit, but like when you call PJ time is I call editing time. Cause I'm, okay. I'm putting out the videos daily, weekly type of thing. So when I want to do that more conversational, it's like, well, I have four days to get this podcast out. If I'm going to be gone this week on the camping trip, like I have to pick and choose. That's why I think having an intern would really help me be able yeah. to do that consistently throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. That just gives me a great. Yeah, I, that's why I said we're very similar people. We yeah. have the same <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I love those conversations. I mean, I hate doing them. It's kind of like exercise where it's like, once I'm doing it, it's really fun, but it's just that getting to it. Whereas editing is just work. Like yeah. you, literally I, there's nothing about it that I feel like I would do it. If I did it in my pajamas, it's just because I'm late. Like that's the only reason, but, <laughs> but with that, with the conversations about, because 
when you're, when you're talking about your episode on threads, it's like, you're reliving it. That's how I feel. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah. You know, this guy, because that's how you're answering. It's like, oh, someone asks a question about the topic and you're like, oh my gosh, this person talked about this. Sometimes I'll even say like, here are the three things that they talked about. And, and then, you know what that does, it just makes them want to go straight to your show. And then as yeah. soon as one person does five people do. And even if you don't, cause I don't do pajama time every week, even, I mean, I know you're supposed to be consistent and there are things that I'm consistent about, but that's just one thing that I give myself a carte blanche. Like as long as I could do it one week for two hours, just because I enjoy it once I get started, but then I am slammed because it made all this extra work for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, it actually works. And so Double -edged sword. Um, <laughs> exactly. So what I, what I would say is something like it just, it's so powerful and you already know how to do it. Um, it's just some things the principal needs to do, you know, like, yes, uh, you could delegate this for sure. But even if you just like blocked out 15 minutes and had it as a calendar event, and that's all you did was 15 minutes, I just think you're going to see a lot results. of results out of that. So it's time well spent. And it's, um, unless it's excruciating, then I would say you should probably go another, you know, like we should do something <laughs> else <laughs> that you should make time for. But okay, so that's awesome. Um, let's talk a little bit about the things that you're doing that work. Um, number one, if you were to pick one thing that's just getting you the absolute most results, what would it be? Remarketing my content. So okay. like I said, originally I was doing audio only and using Buzzsprout, they give you audiograms, but it's just a blank thing you got to help people like click the sound on it i create now with final cut pro cut the videos i'm able to create videos those videos go on facebook linkedin TikTok, and instagram and uh, sorry and youtube shorts so i'm able to create this clip i can edit it up and key point here if you take anything from this always put captions on your videos most people when they're scrolling through any social media probably have the sound off more likely than not so you can just caption your video and people are going to read it and they'll put the sound on. If they don't put the sound on, they're able to see your message regardless. It's just not a, a talking head. So I, I learned. So that's a, a key thing. And, you know, it takes me probably four to six hours per you per podcast I create and then create the marketing clip. I have to optimize it for Instagram, the square. Then I got to optimize it for TikTok, optimize it for YouTube shorts to make sure it's elongated. So it fits right. You got to make sure it's between depending on the channel, 15 or 45 seconds. So that way it hits the algorithm correctly. So things like that. So again, that takes so much time. I want to be able to set 15 minutes aside, but if I got to spend eight hours doing my marketing clips for the week, like I'm burnt out and like, I don't yeah. want to sit there. Yeah, it's hard. So that is probably the biggest thing is now that I have the video and I've been doing that is those clips I send out, I create five to six clips a week. So that way with YouTube shorts or set out on actually go, TikTok and Instagram, there I have to do manually. Face, you can obviously get an app that probably does it for you. Uh, Facebook, they're set out to go, so that way I can just hashtag those clips and people can find them, and I get really good user engagement. I'm able to then, you know, people share it, like autograph my uh, the people I did this week, the DJ group on Instagram. They got thirty thousand followers. They have a hundred thousand followers on Facebook. They've already, you know, repurposed my clips for their own personal use because I give it to them. They have reshared my stories, my posts. So then in the same vein of going to Reddit, trying to get people that automatically me putting the time in now, 30,000 people just saw my clip and I want to market with my logo, everything with it. So that way it's living on the internet for people to see with my link there. And it really helps me grow the brand. So your link, do you consistently link back to your YouTube page? Your yeah. YouTube the, the link in bio question? is my catchword, the catchphrase, <laughs> link in bio, oh. link in bio, but on my link in bio on Instagram, you know, the first thing that I put in there um, I'll send you a screenshot so you can see it. So you can put this on the video for your audience is um, I say like new, new YouTube video, 510 podcast with autograph. And then below it, it will say, listen, to Apple listen on Spotify. So that way the three main ways I know people do it sit right there in my link for TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, excuse me, not YouTube, uh, TikTok, Facebook, or Instagram. And then when my new like daily or vlog videos come out, I'll put that right above it. May vlog, new video release, whatnot. So it's catching to the eye. And then below that, I'll put like YouTube channel, Patreon, uh, LinkedIn. So stuff that kind of get to know me a bit better, but stuff that I really want them to gravitate, I make sure it's right there. And any video I have anywhere, I always end with like, want to see more, link in bio, here's a link. So that way there's always a call to action. Right. 
So um, I, you do have a blog. Do you write a blog post for each and every episode? <laughs> I did that and then I started the YouTube channel and I kind of fell off on the blog, but I used to do a blog for every episode that was coming out. And then again, just, I should continue to do it because I, it was the blog and website was more for SEO, but now they have the YouTube, it really helps with the SEO part of it. I should continue to do it, but then it comes down to again, like I'm just doing so much where I just get tired at the end of the day and it's not an excuse. So like, I, I apologize everyone out there. I should be doing a blog every week, but now that I'm creating the videos go with it and I'm doing like the blog videos and whatnot, it's kind of around the same purpose to a degree, but I should continue to do the blog on my website. Well, don't should all over yourself too much. So. <laughs> and honestly, like, I always feel like, um, you know, prioritizing is really important. So in my world, we've got like processes that you can hand off to VAs to do exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. to repurpose the content, to do all that. One thing I found is like we, I put together a wish list, like everything that I should be doing that I've been shooting all over myself for all these years. And, and that's a process uh, we call our 41 plus pieces. Like it's insane. So it's like for massive multiplication, but we're now putting together just a core one because I felt like it just was so much. <laughs> like if you're just starting out, I was like, uh, what? Like, um, so for someone who's been doing it a long time, it's ideal, but, uh, even, even if you've been doing it a long time, but you're not quite, you know, you're not to phase two yet. Uh, it's a great phase one. Um, we're working on that core part. So what you're saying completely resonates with me. I am such a huge believer in the blog post. Now, having said that, I totally understand what you're saying about YouTube because, you know, Google owns the world. So if it's on YouTube, it's still on Google. <laughs> yeah. So it's still going to show up. And so like, hypothetically, I could just put those videos into a blog post and just let that like be on the website. So like there's things I could do to like, lack of a term, like cheat the system to still do it. Well, well, ideally, and this is what I tell all my people for, if we're going, okay, let's just, let's just start with the core, the core stuff. It is number one, the blog, like number one, and then it's video. Like I, I, because, um, there was a study that came out with Edison research and NPR that they were ranking how people find podcasts and the number one way that they found it was through web searches. And while YouTube is effective by writing a blog post that's optimized and then embedding the video, you know, yeah. or embedding really, um, we embed the audio because we want, um, the podcast want that, yeah. that play. We want that download number, but, um, but at the end of the day, if, if you're optimized for video, like in your case, I would say embed the video because you are optimizing for video. That's where you want everybody going. Uh, and then that way you're, you're double teaming the SEO, you know, it's like, you've yeah. got the, the video side of it, but people are landing on your page. The other thing is that, you know, people don't like choices very much. And so it always stresses me out when we're giving them more than like one or two choices. And so when I'm linking people back, I just want one link. Like I just want one link mm. to that. And if it's a big name or something, I'll give them their own you know, short link. <laughs> and so, but it'll go to the blog post so that every time they're getting the media that I want them to consume, but then there's all the subscribe links right there. So it's like, you know, listen to it on your podcast. So they, they go to that blog post uh, and just by more people going to the blog post, by it being all over again, you're crushing it in SEO because it's just getting, you know, sent over and over again. Uh, yeah. I so hear you saying. It's extremely powerful. And I've, I've started podcasts and left them alone. And still it's the blog post, I believe, because we've been doing it from day one where we've just done blog posts. Um, and then we'll add a video and I'll kind of test it. Having the video embedded does improve the pages uh, performance, but um, that blog post, I would say if there was one thing, if I could make you do anything, it would be like, <laughs> get your blog posts, embed your videos, because that's, that's what you optimize for. It sounds like. And um, and then having the daily videos is huge because, you know, uh, I listen to, I, I don't just listen to the podcasters. I listen to people in other industries where like, oh, you need a podcast because in fact, right now I'm learning all about like real estate syndication, completely unrelated, but he's, you know, he built this entire multi-million dollar company based on a podcast to develop his credibility as a real estate syndicator, real estate syndicators, you know, take you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars from people who don't have a say in the investments 
and invest the money for them. And so you need an incredible amount of credibility. Yeah. And podcasting is was number one thing. And even listening to him, um, you know, it, it came down to the same thing where it's like, you know, just getting it, what you're doing, where you're multiplying the content, getting it out there a lot, but getting found is um, by people that you never would have gotten found by is just extremely powerful. So um, I agree. And I love when people out there comment on my videos and be like, thank you for creating this video. Thank you for putting this out there. I'm like, It just makes my day. It just absolutely makes my day. Okay. So if you're listening and you go, make sure you look Um, make sure you go to, and we'll include a link obviously, but the leap of fate podcast. And when you do subscribe to the video for sure. And then uh, tell Randy what that uh, episode (laughs) meant to you. But, but I would say, you know, um, before we, before we wrap this up, I would say, you know, I I promised you, my promises were number one, I would be prepared. (laughs) Other than that statistic, I need to go look up. I felt, you know, hopefully that was I'll give you an A++. Plus okay. plus. You're very prepared, I promise. <laughs> okay, thank you, Randy. Um, and then the other thing I want you to walk away with is um, an actionable step that you could see yourself being able to take that impacts your show within the next 30 days. And we talked about a couple already, you know, the Reddit, even just upping it just a little bit, I think you're going to see a result. We talked about the blog post, but ultimately your number one thing is delegating. You need to be able to delegate it and you need Mm -hmm. to be able to see yourself getting to that point where you can delegate it. And you've talked about interns. Um, So um, I always feel like too, there's like a hundred right right ways to do anything. (laughs) So I'm going to give you my two cents if if I have your permission um, on this, on how I would approach it after doing this. um, You know, we've we've got our processes and I've tested them through VAs as well as my own assistant. Uh, And so I've been able to see how different people respond to having different tasks on their plate. And um, one, one resource that I found really helpful, I like VAs, like virtual assistants. Um, I prefer interns because I believe in that whole system, but yeah. like you, I haven't had a lot of success with it, quite honestly. I completely relate to what you're saying. So I think don't give up on that because <laughs> it could, it could land in your lap at some <laughs> point, but, but in the meantime, you got shit to do, right? Like you got yeah. stuff you got to get done. Um, and so if you do have some kind of a budget, we use a resource called level nine virtual and they, we give them tasks. Um, you can either subscribe to what they call a pod version where they've got specialists who do video. They do, um, they do video. They also do WordPress websites. I didn't look. Is yours a WordPress website? No, I did on Wix. Okay. Oh, uh, ouch. Okay. I, I'm, not gonna talk about, I'm not even going to start. I'm not even going to start. Like, blog okay, posts, this... do it whenever you feel like it. Cause <laughs> no, that's, I'm just kidding. I mean, a little bit, but um, so, but they do website. I know they work with WordPress. They probably work with Wix because it's not any harder than you know, they work with harder platforms than that to work with. So um, if you had, even if you had something as simple as a list of these are the things that I need done, um, you know, the one thing we had to really train people on was um, I always wanted someone who liked podcasts who could cut the clips out. So they cut the raw clips out and then we would send it to our video team. And then they have templates that are like, this is, this is what we want our square one to look like. This is how we crop it. And then every time it's the same. So it takes the first few times to kind of get used to what you mean by that. And then after that, you have an episode, it records, you know, as many of those things as you can cut out as possible is better. And the video editing from the raw to the finished was always kind of the part that I struggled with doing. I don't know. So if you have the transcription and you have a VA who can proofread it and then attach it and post it because they also can post onto social media for you as well. Um, but it's, it's between two ninety five a month and three ninety five a month. And you get, this when, you, is, when you say two ninety five, you mean like $300 pretty much. Yeah. Per month. Okay. And you get yeah. like 25 to 40 hours a, a month. And we, when we launched next up nation, I launched with 12 episodes and I was training all these different VAs on our, on our process. And even with that, I didn't hit 
our max. So um, it, they're, they're able to do a lot in that little bit of time. But anyway, so that's kind of it. That's a really an inexpensive way to do it. With the writing uh, of, the, of the blog post, you know, one thing I like to do is I like to have someone else write it. And if it, this is, this is such a cheat. This is such a hack. And <laughs> I can't even believe I'm saying this you heard out loud. It here first. <laughs> Anyone who's worked with me knows this hack, but now it's public. But so what I'll usually do is I, I test, you know, I tell you, like I test everything because I have people I work with. I want to have something that I have tried before I recommend it. I haven't tried this yet, but with these episodes, with the hot seat video episodes, writing is so time consuming. I like editing the writing so that it feels more like I said it, you know, it's, it's on brand, but, um, I use seats. I'm actually just going to take the, the raw transcription. I'm not even going to edit it and I'm going to have both of them write it. So as we start rolling out episodes, you guys can all see the comparison of those two writing because the writing is so important. Um, you know, having enough words on your blog post for it to show up for different terms, but yet still be engaging enough for humans to actually want to read it. So um, those are two ways um, with, uh, I don't know what the AI, the AI is a brand new thing. And I'll include an, a link to that too. But um, I, I know they're, they have an unlimited words uh, program and it's like, I don't know, from $99 a month to $250 a month. Um, so, so anyway, those are some of the tools that we've been able to use to start delegating. And then obviously from there, as you're growing, then you can start scaling up. I'm always one yep. of those, like, I'd rather delegate it now because I'm going to get it done. And I don't want to hate what I'm doing. And the more we're doing things that aren't in our zone of genius, the more frustrating it is. Is any of that helpful or? Did it's, I just... No, it's, it's all very helpful. <laughs> okay. It's all very helpful. I think you're right about the like ha having the VAs really help you. My concern would be is how do they know what clips to cut? To, mm -hmm. That would be my question back to you is like, if I have to give them a 60 minute clip and I'm like, okay, guys, I want you to create six clips. How do they know what are the correct clips to do? And is that something I would do? And I'm like, cool, you need to cut it from like second 45 to second 130 and put it in this format or like, how would that actually work? This is what I recommend because we, in fact, this is why I train people on my system because I couldn't just have a VA just, I, I do, they just can't, they're not going to do that unless they love the podcast. Like you need somebody who's listening to it and they're like, oh, that was so inspiring. Right. So you, <laughs> how do you, and, and with VAs or any assistant or anyone who works with us, you, the more clear in, the, the less you pay, honestly, the more clear instructions you need, the more it needs to be really spelled out. So yeah. with the cutting of the clips, Number one, whoever does it needs to cut them, but those are the raw cuts. So they make the raw cuts. Um, number two is who does that. And what I would say is um, it, it handed off to a VA unless it's my right-hand person assistant VA. Does that make sense? So it's somebody yeah. that I can be going, okay, that was boring. And why didn't you use this? Or another thing that I've done is made notes in my interview notes and made them red. So that they know, like, cut out the part where we're talking about this, <laughs> you know, things like that. If I can give them instructions. However, this would be the spot for an intern. So if you did an ad and you said, hey, if you love listening to podcasts and you want to pull out the stuff that inspires you the most um, and you want your life to be changed by pulling it out, I have this great opportunity. Like suddenly you're, you know, that's a lot more exciting than, Hey, help me edit my podcast, you know, yeah. because then we just sound like everybody else. But, but what you're asking them to do is really listen to these podcasts. And it's the part everybody wants to do quite honestly. Um, and, and if that doesn't work, then I would um, enlist a listener, just be like, Hey, who wants to do this? I'll pay you by the hour. I would pay a little bit more for that person to pull those clips I, I, I would pay a lot more, quite honestly, for that person to pull those clips because those are the money shots, right? So yeah. having, but then if you have someone else doing all the editing because this perfect clip was pulled out, then you're optimizing your budget. Does yeah. that make sense? It makes perfect sense. I see where you're going. Based off of that, I think because I'm such a perfectionist to a degree that I would feel more comfortable if I did all the editing, mm -hmm. all the clips to initially start and then they would be the ones doing the posting everything and then slowly build them in yeah Oops. then that's then exactly that's what i would then i think that that would be great and even if you trust you know if you were able to pass off the raw clips like if 
but I guess, do you just, cause you need them in different sizes. Isn't that true? You need them. Yeah. So the, the cool thing though, is like I've optimized Final Cut Pro where I, I have templates already created. So I can create the clip in um, Instagram mode and then I can just pull the, the raw file, put it into the YouTube clip. And then within like three to five minutes, I'm able to just adjust the stuff to then export it very quickly. So I'm, oh, I've learned awesome. how to be key in what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe don't delegate that part, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm sensing some hesitancy to be able. And honestly, that's what I love about podcasters too, is we're all really um, attached to it. So when it comes to branding, the other thing that I was going to talk to you about, we didn't really get to, and I want to, again, um, be uh, sensitive to your schedule, but is the branding. Um, do you have a plan for your branding as far as like, do you have a cohesive brand? Do you feel your, your image, like a people do, you know people do like my logo, the leap of faith, the running man between I love rocks. It. Yeah. yeah. It's a very cool logo. <laughs> no, some people think the episodes are, excuse me, the podcast is called leap of faith because that's more of a term, but I like leap of, it's created leap of faith because you're taking your own own fate into your own hands. Other than that, you know, fair enough, I probably don't have a particular brand image, brand campaign, brand marketing, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I like where you're going. I like how you're building it. You even mentioned it earlier that you want it to kind of grow at its own thing. So, um, so anyway, when it comes to delegating, I think I would prioritize, you know, delegating the blog writing and then possibly edit it afterwards. Okay. If you, if you can delegate having someone do the posting and even responding to different groups and things like that. Um, I think that would be helpful too. So, so did you get anything helpful from our time together? Oh, this has been fantastic. This was <laughs> a great use. What time is it? 1204. It's been a great yes. use of an hour. I hope the audience out there got a great use. You were giving a masterclass in tips. So like I took a lot of <laughs> mental notes, so I'm really excited to go back and try to incorporate that because we're only as good as what we know and you know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. And then if I'm preaching to people, this is how you can improve. This is what you can do to be better. And I don't take the self critique myself, then I'm failing my own mission. So I always, yeah. if you, so if you're out there and you end up listening to my podcast, watching video, please give positive and please give negative feedback. Cause mm -hmm. I can only improve when I know what I'm doing wrong or what you don't like. And so I can make it better. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I have taken an hour of your time already. So I want to kind of <laughs> wrap it up. Is there anything else that you would like to share though, before we wrap if you have a goal, if you have a dream, I know I've already said it before, but I love saying it. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be hard. Go make it happen. People are going to doubt you. There's people going to be jealous of your success when you get there, but don't let the negative people deter you. Literally YOLO, mm -hmm. go make it happen. If you don't, you're going to be sitting back in your life, potentially 20, 30, 40 years and wish that you had taken that leap of faith and made it happen. So why not? The worst that happens is you end up where you are today if it doesn't work out. So just try to make your dreams reality because you'll love yourself in the future for doing it. Awesome. Awesome. And you do have a website, leaf, leap of fate pod.com. And yep. that has all the links to your YouTube, your podcast, your blog, more about you, how to contact you. Is there anything exactly. else people should know about how to reach you? I would say I'm mainly active again on everything is leap of fate pod. L-E-A-P-O-F-F-A-T-E-P-O-D. Ooh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Leave the Fate Pod, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, all of it. Again, uh, I'm sure she'll have it in the link here. But if you have ever have any questions around podcasting, she's a great resource. I'm happy to be here. Anything in general, um, just want to be here for your success. And then please go subscribe and like what I do. <laughs> Awesome. Please do. Well, awesome. Well, hey, and all I want to say is don't be average, make some magic happen. Thanks for being here.